Hello guys, well, today I got another 308 project going on. Um, if you guys watched my last video, I mentioned that I bought some 150 grain FMJs. I had stated in that video that they were boat tails. Uh, they are not boat tails. So this is the, the bullet loaded in a cartridge. I truly don't know what it is. Um, weighs 150 grains, measures uh, 0.308 bullet diameter. Um, it is a flat base bullet. Um, I thought all those FMJ on the 30 calibers were FM or were boat tails, but this one is certainly not. Um, the story is, I was a, kind of a yard sale kind of a deal. The guy had army surplus and a lot of really kind of unusual items, and he had some re uh, reloading stuff. I literally bought these for pennies on the dollar. I don't even know exactly what I paid for. Five dollars, a hundred, maybe something with that effect. In today's world, that's a heck of a buy. I would definitely not buy a 308 FMJ if I was just going to go to Cabela's and buy something. But for that kind of price, today's world, I got a ton of 308 brass. I thought I'll give it a shot. So I get home, start going through my powder. Uh, oh, well, this has been four or five years ago. I bought some uh, IMR 4831. There again, kind of a yard sale deal. I got it for $5 a pound. Um, in today's world, that's a freaking steal. Uh, I didn't have anything at the time that shot 4831, but it was such a great buy, I couldn't pass it up, so I bought it anyway. So yeah, this is a 4831 compressed powder charge. The powder is about halfway up the neck. So when I put the bullet in, it, it just pushes it down in there and compresses it a little bit. Uh, the manual says that this is only going maybe 23, 2400 feet. I didn't bring the chronograph today. Um, in, in all reality, I don't, I don't really care what it's going. Um, if it's somewhere in that range, it's a really mild load. If I got the Thompson Center Compass and the Savage 99 today. I mentioned I have a, a Browning a BLR lever action in 308 also. It's an old, old one. It's probably 30, 40 years old, steel receiver. It's a great shooting gun, but it's a little bit fussy and I kind of just left that one alone. I got that 165 grain load that shoots well on that gun. I'm just like, I'm not gonna monkey around with it. I'll play with these other two a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is going to shoot or not. It's, uh, I hope it does just because I have the components on hand. And I thought, you know what? If I got three or 400 of these loaded kind of as a storage thing. You know, a little bit of a doomsday prepper mindset. I don't think I'm too extreme. But, uh, you know, in today's world, if a guy can get some loaded ammo at a good price, boy, you better take it. And if it'll shoot, great. I mean, for me, that is, that is the deciding factor. If I shoot these and I can't get either one of these guns to group under an inch and a half or two inches, I'll say they're not worth monkeying around with. Probably what I'll end up doing at that point is changing powders. 4831 in a modern reloading manual, don't even list as a 308 powder. Just because we have so many great 308 powders. I mean, there's a dozen, 15, 20 great 308 powders. They don't monkey around with 4831. 70 years ago, they didn't have what we have today as far as availability of different powders. I say availability pretty loosely, things aren't available today. Um, but the powders are, are, you know, being manufactured, I guess. I don't know where the heck they are. If you guys have seen, experienced the same thing that I have, you go to the store to buy powder and it's just not there. You go to some of these internet websites, Powder Valley and such, it's just not there. So anyway, we're gonna give this a try, see what happens. I'm gonna start out shooting the Thompson Center Compass today. So that's really surprising to me. I'll show you guys, but I can see it through the scope. The point of impact is about right on with this gun. I hope that it groups well. That surprised me. I expected the point of impact to be either high or low, because I think the velocity is a little bit low. Well, I think I pulled the last shot. We'll walk up and show you guys what I got. Okay, guys, I'm kind of surprised at how good a shot, actually. These were my first two, well under an inch. This guy was my third one. That makes that about a two-inch group or such. Um, 
got my tape measure it's back to the shooting bench but you know what i'm pleasantly surprised forgot my pan too so here's my marking 22 with a lead bullet i'm gonna shoot one goop with uh 308 or excuse me with the savage 99 honestly for what i got into the components uh, that's pretty much acceptable well, I am very pleasantly surprised with that. I think I'm gonna call that last shot kind of one that I pulled having those first two shooting that good. I only loaded about 10 or 15 on this test load. I'm shocked how good it shoots, honestly. I'm gonna try three shots out of the Savage uh, 99 and see what it does, but uh, shoot, I, I think I might be onto something here. All right, guys, we're gonna give the Savage 99 a try. I'll tell you what, I. I can't get over how good that shot, honestly. I did not expect, I mean, that's not a great group. You know, I think I've, if you guys watched my channel before, I've, I'm a one inch three shot group guy. If it doesn't shoot one inch at a hundred yards, I keep working at it. Bullets, powder, different charges, whatever. This is a different story. You know, I've got almost nothing into these components. $5 a pound for the powder, $5 a hundred for the, for the bullets. Um, if I'm shooting a solid two inch group, um, for ammunition that's just kind of as a storage thing. You know, I've mentioned my doomsday prepper mindset, you know, and as crazy as the world is right now, I would not say that's the bullet I'm gonna go harvest big game with. It's just not. But if it shoots good, it's reliable, and I can get four or 500 rounds loaded and, and just stashed away and put some notes on it just to say what it does, what kind of shoots in, Tell you what, if, if there's somebody watching this channel that's just starting about reloading or just started or just thinking about getting into it, one thing I would say that I am not good at is documentation. Um, I have been loading since before I could drive a car and I don't have enough notes as far as my reloading, bullets, powder, components, velocity. Man, I just, about five to 10 years ago, I realized that I need to start making better documentation on this so uh, i got one book that's got quite a few notes in it another thing i've started doing which i i made the mistake of earlier is not dating it so i've got notes in there i don't know when it was but the dates are important because what you realize is as you progress through this reloading that as you date material you can say oh i tried that 20 years ago and it didn't work or i tried it 20 years ago and now that component is available I used to use a lot of blue dot in 41 mags, 44 mags. I haven't seen blue dot on the shelf in probably 10 or 15 years, but I have some blue dot loads for 44. So when I look back 20 years ago, that them blue dot loads were successful. There might be a day I might not be able to find anything but blue dot. Who knows with this component deal anyway. So anyway, that's my speech as far as documentation on reloading. Um, we'll see how this 99 shoots. So that safety had slid forward just a little bit. The safety's a little unique on these, and I did not have that bolt closed all the way. Can't see where my third shot was. We're gonna check it out. I think it's shooting actually pretty good. All right, everybody, this was an interesting thing. So these are my three shots with the Thompson center compass. I'm aiming at this same target. This is regular eight by 11 sheet of paper. This is where the three shots from the Savage went. Not a terrible group. That's probably under two inches. Not, not terrible. Um, 
I would say for that setup, that's acceptable. It shoots one foot low. Well, not quite, maybe eight or nine inches. Very interesting that that's Thompson, point of impact's pretty good. Savage shooting acceptable group. But anyway, I guess these are the kind of things that make us gun nuts tick. Um, if it was easy, I guess, I don't know. That's the, that's the fun of these projects, I suppose. Um, I'm not unhappy at all with that group on the Savage. Not a bit. I there again. You know, I've I've said how I got a hold of these components. I got two guns that are shooting what I would say is acceptable. I'm gonna shoot one more group with the Thompson and see if I can tighten that up any or see see if, what it changes. But shoot, I think I'm gonna try to get you know kind of some quantity of these loaded up and just put them on the shelf for a rainy day. All right, guys, I'm going to shoot one more group with this Thompson. Like I say, I didn't load many of these. This is just a complete trial deal. Um, I know that in the one book, it's an old Hodgson book. I'll tell you, if you guys ever get a, a chance to pick up one of them books, I've Hodgson, uh, I can't think of what it is, but it's the it's the hardbound book that, uh, oh, I mean, it came out, I think, in the early 90s, but uh, it's got more reloading data in than any other single book I've got. It has a full data package for all brands of powder. Back in those days, Hodgson didn't own Winchester and all them others, but they did a ton of load data on them. That's where I found this load. And what's what I like about that book is it'll show the pressure. You know, uh, a 308's operating 50,000 uh, pounds, and this load was showing really low. It was in the in the higher 38,000. So it's a really mild load. I mean, shoot the bolts open. There's no pressure at all. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna shoot one more group with the Thompson. Make sure that wasn't a mistake. Then probably shoot one more group with the with the Savage and probably call it call it good. I'll go show you guys this group. Um, I pulled that last shot big time. I don't know why I do that sometimes. I hope I'm not the only one, but I got five out of six, pretty decent. We'll show you. All right guys, show you what I got. I pulled that last one, which was that shot right there. Brought the tape measure. So I've got a five shot, about two and three quarter inch group. Um, whoops. So yeah, if you guys can see that, that one and that one's my two furthest apart. About two and three quarter inch five shot group. I'm gonna throw that flyer out. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna go with this load. You know, I've, I've mentioned before, I'm a one shot, or excuse me, one inch three shot group guy. Normally, I'd keep working at it. And I'll bet you if I worked at it with this bullet, I could get those groups to tighten up with some different powder. Um, you know, there's so many good 308 powders. CFE 223, BLC2, 748. I mean, my goodness, there's, there's, there's so many good powders that are better than 4831. I'll bet I can get them groups better if I, but the difference is I have five pounds of 4831 that uh, I paid $5 a pound for. I'm gonna say for what I got going there, yeah, that's not a great group. That's a two, 250 yard hunting group. So, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to load some of them up and just call it a day, put them on the shelf, put some labeling on it, see, uh, just keep it. Just, I mean, there again, it's kind of the doomsday prepper mindset as far as just having some stuff on hand. So, I'm going to shoot one more group with the Savage 99. Hopefully that one's, you know, stays right in there. So, we'll see what it does. Alrighty, so we're going to take three more shots with the Savage 99. I'm hoping we get the same results. Um, you know, one thing I got thinking about with these bullets, you think about the bullet technology manufacturing process in the last 20 years. Um, I remember, it wasn't that long ago, it didn't seem like, probably 25 years ago, that the factory ammunition had the reputation of not being as accurate as hand-loaded ammunition. Boy, I don't know if we can say that in today's world. 
Um, you know, with some of the 6.5 Creedmoor, even some of those premium ammo out of a 308, um, boy, I'll tell you, we, we've got some great ammunition available to us. And I believe that the bullet technology has come so far in the last two or three decades. Um, when I first started reloading, I mean, a lot of the guys were saying, the reason you reload is to get more accurate uh, results from your rifle. Boy, just not the case today. These bullets that I'm reloading, these uh, these full metal jackets, who knows where they came from? They could be foreign made, they could be pulled down from mill specs. I mean, the box, literally the box that I have that these come in is a white box and somebody had written with a magic marker, .308 FMJ. I have no idea where they came from. I am saying that, I mean, shoot, these could be 50 year old World War II surplus stuff. <laughs> who the heck knows? So I think the results I'm getting today is pretty satisfactory. We'll see what this uh, Savage 99 will do. Probably call it a day after that. All right, guys, I think, I, got a, I think I got a pretty decent group going on there. We'll check it out. All right, guys, show you what we got here. Not great results, but not terrible either. So, so that group is about the same, almost exactly. Two and three quarters of an inch. I got six shots there. Here I had five out of six with a flyer. So the, the results are about the same. Um, point of impact is pretty consistent. Same here. What's interesting is, like I said earlier, the Tom Thompson's clear up here, this one's down here. So I'm aiming at this target with both rifles. So really, a matter of just some adjustment in the scope, I'll take for that Savage to be pretty reliable with that. So, you know what? I think we are gonna call that good. Well, I think we're gonna call that a day at the shooting range today. Um, you know, pretty consistent with both of them rifles, shooting about that two and a half inch you know, some I've seen some rifle rider or gun riders talk about you got to shoot a five shot group. Yeah, I don't know. I've shot great three shot groups, shot some good five shot groups. Really, for just uh, just defense, you know, kind of that uh, stockpile mindset. I'm plum happy with what these are doing. They're consistent out of both guns. You know, if a guy was defending himself or harvesting game to feed his family, that gun would work in both those scenarios just fine. Not a thousand yard sniper rifle. That's not the purpose of this whole deal. So anyway, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, please leave some comments. You know, if anybody watching this has used IMR 4831 N308, I'd be curious to hear the results you guys have had. I didn't expect this thing to be the, the perfect load. I really didn't. Um, like I say, in a modern reloading manual today, you can't find 4831 load data for 308 because there are so many other powders that are better. So I wasn't sure what to expect with this, but uh, anyway, I'm sure tickled with these guns. You know, I mean, there's a cult falling on these Savage 99s and I see why. I freaking love that little gun. It is just so handy and so, I don't know, it's just a neat, neat classic rifle. I am so tickled with that. And you know, I've got to say the same about that Thompson Center. So that Thompson Center is just a dandy rifle. I, I haven't looked down for a long time, but I think they're selling brand new for $250. Three position safety. Um, the trigger on this one is pretty dang nice. Not perfect, but it's pretty nice. Um, what a great, what a great deal for that kind of money. You know, we're living in a great time right now with the manufacturing of these guns. You know, with the, I don't know if you can buy a bad bolt action rifle in today's world. Got a brother that shoots the Mossbergs. He's had fantastic results with him. Uh, more of an entry level rifle. I think they call him a Patriot. Never owned one. He freaking loves them. He's got them in several calibers. Had nothing but great success with them. So, anyway, I think we'll call out a day. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I had a, a group of friends here from the Portland, Oregon area uh, here just a few days ago. Brought them out here. We did some shooting. We had a great time with them. So, I wanted to just shout out to Brent, Lynn, and Nolan. Um, good, good, good people. We had a a ton of fun 
Brent likes guns and uh, the other two haven't had a lot of experience with them. So we had a ton of fun. We shot a couple nine millimeters and a couple different things. So anyway, give a shout out to Brent, Lynn and Nolan. Thanks for watching everybody.